All right, so here we have Slavoj Zizek, also known as Haiti. He was a very good player back in the day. Now he's he's okay. I mean, he plays. He used to play recently, about a month ago, at two K plus level. Recently, he's been losing a bit of rating though. So yeah, he's just trying to get back into the arena. But he is a very good player. You should know him if you played a long time ago. But if you don't, that's fine. He is Berbers here. Berbers is actually quite a strong save. It's not. It's a little bit vulnerable early game. But it's, especially when it gets, you know, later Castle Age, it's a powerhouse. If you have options that you want to make someone like full Cavalier against, absolutely demolishes most combinations. So, Berberus is actually quite good Civ. On the other side, we have Maratin. You see Marin quite a bit, I don't know too much about him. But I think 1860 is quite low rating for him. Maybe he's on losing streak. He's probably 19 plus 2k on reasonable days. He is Aztecs, of course. Aztecs being a really strong Civ. And this is probably going to be quite a good... You know, demonstration of Aztecs. Terror didn't really show that, but <laughs> we're gonna go for this one again this time. There are a little shade so there. Look at the maps. I mean, what do you think of these maps? Well, uh, Maratin, he's Gold's in a good position. Stone, a little exposed, but it's to the left, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, looking at the back of his map, he's got two Golds in there, so it's an okay looking map from him. They're a little close together. And uh, Gold on the right for Dayak. Two forward stones for him. He's going to be Berber, so he's going to want that stones. No extra resources in the back for him, so I definitely prefer Maratin's map with uh, Zayek's map. I might go a little bit more aggressive with it. Um, it's probably easier to call player one Haiti, but I think it might make more sense if you call him Slavoj just for the sake of... Uh, sure. Yeah, just because people might not know him. But um, I'm not sure if he really wants stone. Camel Archers vs. Meso Civ is uh, a bit yeah. dubious. <laughs> could work but uh yeah not the best option in the world um obviously with aztecs you're kind of thinking the first thing that you think of is how do you stop the monk rush and i think that maybe some light cavalry might be a good opening or scouts might be a good opening for the berber player here we didn't see that the last time that the aztecs was playing with uh, john slow but uh hopefully we'll be able to see that. that's certainly the strategy i would go for if i was the berbers yeah, I mean, I would, um, as Berbers, I would open scouts and definitely try to take into light cavalry as soon as I can because, you know, you could actually make him in Castle Age. You could, make, you could do a Blacksmith Stable up FC, but then just start making scouts in Castle Age to get the 15% cheaper cavalry bonus. It's really nice, but also you've got slightly faster farms because, you know, your villagers move that bit faster. I think I did it once at 28 plus 2, you end up with approximately about 100 food extra. It's, it's a really nice bonus. It's a little bit... You know, it's not that underrated, but especially late game as well, you end up with a good few villager advantage with your economy. It's really, it's a nice little bonus. Not quite Aztecs, though. Not quite Aztecs, yeah, but I, I like it for the luring boars. Luring boars are a lot easier. We're going forward for tower rushes. Um, certainly that makes things a lot easier. But, yeah, I definitely would like to see the light cab. Certainly that discount on food is really going to help them out uh, in any situation that we see them in. So right now, players just going through their opening builds and uh, waits to be seen what kind of strategy they'll do with Feudal Age. Uh, late yeah, game, who do you play, think um... you give this to? Sorry? Late game. Say if this goes to late game, which civilization? Uh, probably Berbers. <laughs> it's a bit odd to say, but um, you won't hear this often, but the biggest weakness for Aztecs is heavy cavalry. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. It's because, you know, um, they do have really good monks, but, you know, it's unrealistic to expect that you could have 30 monks and you could just suddenly start converting, you know, up to 50 cavalier. It's not going to happen. But Berbers can really mass quite a lot of cavalier, and if they get to that point, they could really do some damage. Only pikemen from the Aztecs. Garden Wars still makes them quite strong against, you know, things in general, but it's not ideal. And, you know, their Arblast die, their Jaguars die, their Eagles die. Cavalier is a really good option here for Berbers. But, you know, Aztecs can really win the early game, so... The Berbers really, uh, I think their strength is really in massing their cavalry and having a lot of cavalry, having a nice horde. And, of course, one of the weaknesses of the Aztecs, they don't get uh, Halberdier. So I think certainly that would be uh, a very good late game option. So we have a little bit of a dynamic here where the Aztecs have a better probably early game, or Castle Age if you consider that early game, and the uh, Berbers might have advantage late game. But regardless, we still have this uh, resource problem for uh, Slavo, uh, Sl Slavo, Slavog, Slavoj, Slavoj, yeah, Slavoj. It's oh. uh, some female celebrity I don't really know from wherever the hell he's from. It's 
Yeah, so Slavosh is really going to have to try to defend his resources. That's going to be the big problem for him in the early game. Yeah, the thing I would say about Haiti is um, we saw from the Portuguese game, Hand Cannoneers coming out, Berbers, I've never really thought they should. I thought the Camel Archer shouldn't really be that nerfed, but they should lose HC, but it didn't go that way. But um, Berbers do have Hand Cannoneers, so if they want to go their own champions, for example, and we might even see own champs or jaguars coming from the Aztec player, then Berber player can always go hand cannoneers to back up their champions. But that depends on how good their economy is going to be, so I think Savage really wants to head for a really hefty economy here, because if he gets it, then he has the counters for Aztecs. And uh, Maratin up way faster than Slavage. Uh, has the deer, checking his resources, I think he'll be able to pull this off. And yeah, 25 plus 2 is pretty standard for something like Aztecs. Why do you think Slavage is so late to the next age? Because Berber's... I mean, it's not that big of an eco bonus early on. Yeah. I mean, he's doing, you know, 27 plus 2. If he's going for something like Scouts, that's actually fairly reasonable. Um, the one thing I don't like too much about having a quick look at Maratin's map is his main gold. It's actually quite hard for him to wall his main gold, you know, safely against ranged units. It's a bit um, too close to the front of that woodline. He can't walk from the woodline towards his TC to defend it, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there we go. Barracks coming up from Slavage, just kind of like we accept expected. He'll probably go with the stable after this uh, for some early scouts, take some map control, try to pick off a few monks, and uh, maybe steal some of those relics early game. Yeah, it's, it's definitely very strong. I mean, you want a 27 plus 2 for... Scouts, um, Timotheus, Timo, he usually does 27 plus 2 and he has a good eco bonus if, well, reasonable, slightly. But then you see things like um, Melkor. Melkor always does 28 plus 2 scouts, that way you have the economy to do exactly what you want. And it's actually really good to have that kind of economy when you're doing scouts, so. Yeah, certainly still uh, bosh. Spare to go higher builds. 26 plus 2 is not really, I don't agree with it, really. Mm -hmm. Lavage certainly uh, floating a lot of resources. He's still got almost 300 wood in the bank extra. Gonna have enough gold, gonna have a good amount of food. And uh, with all that extra wood, should be able to see it up quite a few farms to help him produce some scouts. Yep, I'm not... Um, I'm not sure if he's gonna save making scouts until he's in, or if he's gonna make some when he's still... Uh, in, well, he's, um, until he's castle. I think he might make some when he's on the way up. Maybe I, just one, just so he could do some sniping, but... I think certainly with this fast, faster castle time for Maratin, it makes sense to make at least one or two in the uh, in the Feudal Age. I mean, it always makes sense to add one or two, but um, what you usually would do is you would just add two unless they're doing anything else. Uh, having three scouts in total is huge. Not only can yeah. you scout the whole map, actually speaking of that, we should probably check the scouting real quick. Pretty, uh, pretty mediocre from both players, I would say. I would say same. They see some of the map, but not all the map. And I can see most of the relics. So there we go, Maratin up to the next age. Gonna drop down double Monastery, just like we saw John Slow in the last game. Uh, as well, Maratin keeping his eagle behind the wall. To, uh, not get it picked off by the scout. That's something I'm noticing now. And uh, Slavage coming forward with a villager, actually. I wonder what that villager is going to do. Mm, for seat workshop, maybe? Here's the thing, though. It doesn't have loom. And here's the eagle moving out in the castle age. Could get picked if uh, Maratin sees it. And as well, there's a wolf there. Oh. And now Maratin's gonna see it, that he sees the Siege Workshop, the wolf's gonna move in too! This is a horrible scenario, as Slavage's gonna lose that villager, 100%. The eagle kind of turned around the last second. One more hit. Oh my god, that was close. Still the wolf's on the tail. Oh, that was so close, one HP left. That would have been a disaster for uh, Slavage. And what a ballsy play. Even going to go out with the knight now. Make sure you have the push to talk on. 
Yeah, I was just having a sneezing fit. That was... And even gonna pick time. off the monk, this is a perfect start from uh, Slavage with what strategy he's chosen to go, on, go for. Picking off a monk, picking off the eagle, still got a three scouts here, and the knight. The knight is actually quite a nice addition. I don't see the monsters working too well, but you know, maybe you could open a lot more monks. I think a lot of monks, he could probably pull something off here, but... Slavodge is now adding a second TC. He's actually quite heavy on gold, so I think maybe he might... He might try 2TC this, but he might add a third one if he sees he actually can do some damage and still have the economy. This is I kind think, of funny. Um, Slavodge assumed that villager would, would have died, so he set the rally point to the town center outside, so he had that villager walk all the way outside and realize that his buddy's still alive, so he went back. You never know. <laughs> is he sad to coming in from Rathen? No, he wants to actually do something about this. Yeah, well, I assume he's going to go... He's going to go Redemption right away. Do you... With the option of Redemption for the Aztecs, I kind of question the Siege Workshop. Do you... Is this... Is there any situation where this works out for Slavage going Mangano from the Siege Workshop against Aztecs? Yeah, you only really need one Manganel. It's better to open the Manganel than to than with the Ram if it's quite late in Castle Leech. Yeah, but I know, just worry about it against the, uh, more than against the monks, so... It's already worth it, and then you can just add Rams and School Light Cav or whatever you want to do to counter the monks. Mm -hmm. My curiosity here is whether that Muratin is going to show the monks early. Yes, he is. And a nice Maganel deletion. But uh, from that, I'm fairly sure Slovodge was able to see the HP of the monk to guess the upgrades. Obviously, Sanctity and Redemption, so 55 HP. So, you know, we're going to see monks, but 3 TC from Slavoj. Are we seeing a third one yet? Uh, I mean, third from Maratin. We're seeing a third one now from Slavoj, so... I mean, Maratin is way ahead, and also he's Aztecs with a decent number of monks with redemption, so... I think he's looking at the favorite to win right now. Yeah, I, I like the early engagement from Slavoj, but so far the Siege Workshop hasn't done anything for him. Uh, he's fallen quite quite a ways behind on villages. Obviously, he's had to invest in the extra building for the stable. Um, and Bratton, way ahead in economy. And he's starting to build up some of his walls in the back as well. Luckily, Slavaj should be able to get a, a few relics at least. And that'll help his well, economy Well, is going to get four relics. And I think that makes the Siege Workshop worth it, to be honest. Because, you know, he forced redemption at the same time as basically just delayed the monks from going to get the relics. So I think it's I think it was a reasonable investment, especially it, it plays well towards the late game. If um, Slavodge is able to turtle this one quite a bit and just doesn't die in early imp to Maratin after Maratin's boom is you know over and he's starting to push, then he does have all those late game options we talked about to open with. So I think it puts him in a good position. Well, part of it is that he's got the relics, and another part is that the Aztec player doesn't have the relics. So maybe investing a lot to make sure that the Aztecs doesn't get the relics might be a good option late game. But, uh, yeah, so Maratin probably going to go for a faster Imperial Age. Uh, probably going to go Eagle Warrior, I imagine. I can't imagine another unit to go for. And uh, I like this outpost from Sauvage. Maybe even a few more as well, just to see what his opponent is doing. Scouting's pretty difficult on Arena because of those walls, but whatever you can get, great. Pretty peaceful boom from these players. Look at this! Oh my god, look at the goal from Ratten. Oh god. You see the gold, Mr. GPN? For the 1.6k. Yeah. My god. Yeah. Not the best play. Well, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what he was doing. He was overmining the stone when he added that TC on it. Uh, the gold, I mean. But the relic isn't quite doing it for him. I kind of want to see what the relic gold is already, though. Well, it can't just be from one relic, yeah. But here we go, Imperial Age uh, from Ratin. I just checked. What is it? has 277 gold from the uh, one okay. relic. Which is more than Slavoj has so far. And he's got three right now. Although, they just got in the monastery, of course. But uh, Maratin up to the next age. Going to have a castle eventually as he transitions stone, but uh, right now on the cards, it's going to be Eagle Warriors and Monks. Should be a fairly strong early Imperial Age. That's where the Aztecs are really strongest, early Imperial Age. 
And Slavage investing into some armor from his uh his cavalry as well. Very heavy on stone. Hopefully he'll be up to the next age shortly as well. But um maybe he's investing in some sort of push right now. Well, I like this. The the heavy amount of light cap is a really nice investment. I mean, have you seen how Melkor plays most games where uh if he has this kind of situation, he would just add in lots of knights, you know, like full castle age knights. It's actually really strong to do that, especially with BSS decks. I mean, it doesn't quite have enough monks to convert, you know, 15 knights. The eagles aren't going to be able to do anything, even in Imperial. But, I don't know, knowing Slavoj, I think he might want to imp quite fast. Is that, uh, yeah, he's building a market, so he's wanting to fix his economy. Well, it doesn't matter whether you have knights, cavalry, or paladin, monks will be as evenly uh, effective. So it doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter with respect to that, and uh, it's are pretty okay against Eag Warriors, best but not the worst. And uh, we should see a castle coming up from Slavage. Let's see where he puts it. That's a pretty big question. I think he's going to put it right between the gold and stone, where he can hopefully maintain control of those. Well, a couple of things I don't like here. Slavage is almost ready to up. I would probably sell just to up that a little bit faster because you're yes, someone who's you know. I mean, he might sell some resources if he's still not up by the time that Maratin hits him. But I think he would probably like to at this point because he's oh not my god. that heavily into Castle Age. Oh my god, look at that castle. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. He could wow. get it, but this is a risky play. He, he, he can get, get that it. castle. I think he probably will get this one if the villagers don't get converted, but Maratin risks so much if he tries to convert the villagers instead of the Light Cavern Knights. This is just such a risky play. I... If you could get the Mangonels, that would be great. That looks like they're going to start to convert right now. Going to convert the uh, convert the villager. Knights got converted. There's four villagers just right next to the castle that are building stables. They should be building the castle. Counter castle coming up from Rats, and this was a is it a terrible decision? It's hard to tell. I wish he brought those villagers forward. Just the size of Slavage's balls right now is just uncomprehensible. This is, this is <laughs> incredible. Why does he not bring those villagers forward? That that could be the difference in this game. Those four villagers building the stable. Now he realizes it. Castle's gonna be up for Maratin. It's really close. Really close. Uh, it's not gonna be up. Castle's up. It's gonna focus down the villagers. 95%. Is it gonna be a doubt castle? 96? 97? Oh, last second. Maratin not focusing down the villagers and the castle's up. Wow. Oh, that's just disgusting. That's... <laughs> That was, that was my insides just popping, that was nice. But let's take a quick look at just the situation right now. Slavoj is not an Imperial. If he gets, you know, enough plus two knights in here, then he could actually, you know, counter trebs. He could do quite a lot of economy rating. There is no way at this point that Maratin can actually wall against anything, but he can, however, make units. But Maratin is not making any back buildings. He's not making any back monasteries to make monks outside the range of that castle. I think Maratin's actually kind of screwing himself by not making any military buildings to uh, build units back that aren't going to die to the castle. That's pretty pretty nice. Well, you can't use those monasteries anymore because there's a castle right there. Luckily, we do have a That's trebuchet a... out, so Maratin will be going somewhere eventually. Um, how many monks do we have out right now? We have two monks out. We have quite a few pikemen. So I think this is enough for Maratin right now to really push this back. Um... And this is a big investment from uh, Slavaj. He's fully invested in the Castle Age, has no gold in the bank anymore, so he's going to try to put the nail in the coffin right now. And luckily, we talked about how the Aztecs don't get halves. This is all they have. All they have is pikemen, even in the Imperial Age. But two great conversions on those knights will push back uh, Slavaj for now. Really tense time in this part of the game. Pretty unfortunate that uh, castle's going down. I think maybe he donated a bit too many knights, not enough villagers to build that castle. He did have the balls, but he didn't go all in. A little bit old. <laughs> yeah. And there's the G. Right there. G -G. Single, singular G. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, that escalated pretty quickly. I think it's nine petards to take down the standard castle without any upgrades for it. I think it's nine. Yeah, that, that wasn't certainly something I thought about uh, going petards, but that could have been useful. Yeah, he had yeah, the balls. Thinking... I, I, I would have liked, and just a little bit better, you know, moving those villages a little bit early, getting the castle up earlier could have really changed the game. Um, and uh, this decision to go into the castle age, all in castle age, once that castle was up, looks like it was the wrong decision. 
I mean, he did have the resources to make more knights, which is the problem. Because, you know, if he sent in all those villagers instead of building the stables, he would have had the castle up. He probably had a better position. But at the same time, he could also afford to have more stables to make more, you know, plus two knights. And I think if he had that at the same time the castle was up, he might have probably won. Yeah, window opportunity there, but didn't take advantage of All right. I want to have a quick look at these achievements, actually. Yeah, let's look. Oh, the relic gold. I mean, one relic to four, and we're still seeing that much of a difference. It's only twice as much when you've got mm -hmm. four times as more relics. It's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, big difference. Better economy for a Maratin in every single category. And better uptimes. Yeah, that time's, you know, like, for a 3 TC boom, that's actually, you know, a reasonable Imperial time. He had, you know, a decent amount of villagers for it as well. It's, uh... I think that's quite a good play from Maratin. Maratin playing at, you know, his proper level. As I said, I think his rating of, like, 1860 or whatever it was is just not, not good. I think he's definitely a lot better than that. Alright, would you, since that was a shorter game, you mind going straight into the last game? Do you mind going into the last game? Yep. I need to quickly grab a drink, but it's going to be literally 20 seconds, so... Sure. Hope everyone is enjoying these arena games on this Friday night. Love all the chat engagement. This is one of the most active chats I've seen. Even though we've only got 25 villagers, uh, 25 villagers, 25 viewers here, not villagers. Uh, I really love to see that. I'm back. Chat. Can I remember the push to talk exists this time? Yes, this you did. is. Huh? Yes, you did. This is um for us game two, right? Yeah, for us. All right, just kind of stem whenever. Three, two, one, go. I'll pause when I um get in. 